In this video, I'm going to discuss other important cause of respiratory distress in units, which is meconium aspiration syndrome. In the previous video, I discussed the respiratory distress syndrome, which is the most common cause of respiratory distress in units. Okay, in this video, I'm going to discuss the meconium aspiration syndrome. From the name, meconium means the first stool passed by a newborn. So the first stool of the baby is the meconium. Okay, and aspiration the so from the name of the syndrome it is aspiration of meconium so the definition is when newborn breathes or a mixture of mutic fluid and meconium okay so when the baby breathes the meconium into the lungs okay it is a meconium aspiration syndrome when does that happen it happens around the time of delivery maybe little bit before delivery or during delivery or maybe so in some cases after delivery okay if there was meconium in his face for example so let's start with the pathogenesis of meconium aspiration syndrome actually the meconium normally passes about 24 hour within delivery okay so the first stool passing of the uh, baby should be within 24 hours after after delivery okay but in some cases we have some stressed conditions and these stress conditions by some mechanism going to talk about may lead to early intrauterine passage of meconium and this early intrauterine passage of meconium may lead to meconium aspiration into lung now let's get back to the stress condition that may lead to early intrauterine passage of meconium for example we have many stress conditions for example if we have post term pregnancy okay if we have a post term pregnancy we have aging and calcification of the placenta physiological aging and calcification of placenta okay and that will lead to placenta if insufficiency in way, one way or another okay in dm in pregnancy also is a stress condition high blood pressure in a pregnant woman is also a stress condition all these conditions one of them or more of than one of them okay will lead to decrease o2 and blood to infant so if we have placental insufficiency due to for example aging of placenta due to post-term pregnancy more than 40 weeks pregnancy or if we have preeclampsia for example that led to placental insufficiency the result is decrease O2 blood and the blood to infant. Okay, so patient or the baby will have less O2 in his blood. That will lead to hypoxia, which is a stressful condition. Okay, the hypoxia will lead to stress, and this stress will lead to steroid secretion by the adrenal gland of the baby and that will result in two things intestinal movement okay so the intestine of baby will move 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 and the anal sphincter will further more relax okay so we have intestinal movement and anal sphincter relaxation so the meconium is sitting down in the colon and after this hypoxia due to intestinal uh, i'm sorry placental insufficiency due to any cause we will have increase in sinal movement and anal sphincter relaxation and that will lead of course to what to early intrauterine passage of meconium okay and this early intrauterine passage of meconium may lead to meconium aspiration into lung so the early releasing of the meconium it will mix with the amniotic fluid it will stain the amniotic fluid and at the end the patient or the infant will breathe this amniotic fluid and meconium and this aspiration will lead to of course to breathing a problem the breathing problems in the uh, meconium aspiration is due to three causes maybe due to obstruction by inflammation okay so this is the trachea and this is for example okay that's a green thing the meconium okay the presence of meconium in the trachea will lead to irritation of the tracheal wall and inflammation of the tracheal wall and that may lead to obstruction by this inflammation okay 
or the meconium itself may obstruct the airways the upper or the lower airways okay and this is the second way of breathing uh, or cause of breathing problems and the uh, meconium aspiration syndrome so obstruction directly by meconium or the meconium may pass the trach and the bronchi into the uh, alveoli and small airways okay and that may lead to chemical pneumonitis chemical pneumonitis which is a life-threatening condition in uh, newborns okay so these are the three important mechanisms of uh, breathing problems in meconium aspiration so this is a, so we start with the definition then talked about the pathogenesis again we have some uh, uh, placental insufficiency and that will lead to decrease o2 and the blood to infant okay that will lead to hypoxia stress and release of steroid the steroid releasing will lead to internal movement and anus sphincter relaxation which lead to meconium release okay early release of the meconium and that will lead to breathing problems due to three causes the inflammation to the airways or the obstruction by the meconium or the uh, chemical pneumonitis now let's move to the symptoms and the diagnosis of meconium aspiration the first thing to notice in meconium aspiration the presence of stained amniotic fluid you see a greenish or yellowish amniotic fluid you see this uh, this strange color of the amniotic fluid oh this is very indicative of presence of meconium uh, in the amniotic fluid this is the first thing to be noticed not only the amniotic fluid will be stained also we have staining of skin umbilical cord and the nail beds of the child if we have significant meconium releasing and aspiration but alone these two things do not mean that the baby has aspirated meconium yes we saw uh, uh, meconium stained uh, amniotic fluid and we saw meconium stained stain uh, skin umbilical cord and nail beds but that doesn't mean the that the infant has aspired the aspirated the uh, meconium okay so we have to have some symptoms in the newborn to say that oh yes he has symptoms of meconium aspiration like rapid or labored breathing okay he's tired when he is taking uh, uh, breath he, he can't take breath uh, insufficiency uh, i'm sorry uh, okay insufficient way i mean okay and you may see cyanosis in severe cases a slow heartbeat okay you may see barrel shape chip chest okay or low apgar score and you all know what apgar is called about breathing about the heart rate the color and muscle tone reflexes i'm going to put a video a nice video about apgar score at the end of this video okay to learn you that so the uh, first thing to note is the staining of amniotic fluid or the patient or the infant skin umbilical cord and nail beds after that you notice rapid rapid or labored pre labored breathing okay cyanosis slow heartbeat low apgar score so you have a high suspicion of meconium aspiration this can be confirmed by what by x-ray and this is the best test to do in meconium aspiration what you see in x-ray is a patchy or streaked area on the lung due to the meconium aspiration as you can see here is a patchy okay patchy or streaked areas on the lung you may see also increase anterior posterior diameter okay so parallel chest uh, parallel chip chest increase anterior posterior diameter okay so this is the first and uh, the most important and the best test to be done in meconium aspiration uh, but by stethoscope uh, the doctor can hear uh, some wet crackles okay crackles if you do blood gases i'm sorry if you do blood gases you can you may see respiratory acidosis and this is maybe due to hypercapnia accumulation of co2 due to co2 retention due to failure of the lung to watch out this co2 okay so this is how to suspect and to diagnose the meconium aspiration 
staining of the fluid and so on after that symptoms the rapid or labor breathing cyanosis low heartbeat by chest x-ray you confirm the diagnosis by seeing the patchy or streaked areas on the lung increase the anterior posterior diameter okay by stethoscope you may see uh, here uh, wet crackles okay now let's move to the treatment of meconium aspiration and i will start with prevention how to prevent meconium aspiration the most important and uh, useful thing is to monitor fetal status okay to suspect the uh, susceptibility to have meconium aspiration actually there are some things that uh, are not uh, proved until now in prevention of meconium aspiration like giving surfactants, steroids, antibiotics actually the benefit of these things uh, uh, is not uh, proved until this moment okay so we have what we call amnio infusion amnio infu infusion uh, used to be used for uh, preventing meconium aspiration by breaking down the meconium into uh, simplest uh, material okay but researchers say it is not useful at all instead the researchers say that uh, uh, it increases the morbidity of children i just put it there uh, so that you know that there's you, there's something that we call amnio uh, infusion okay so prevention is mainly by monitor fetal status now the treatment of meconium aspiration you have to see is the child vigorous what do we mean by vigorous a vigorous mean he, he is doing good okay he have he has strong respiratory efforts he has good muscle tone okay his heart rate is above 100 beat per minute okay so strong respiratory efforts he is crying he has good muscle tone he has heart rate that above 100 so he is he vigorous yes if he is vigorous then you have to continue normal steps with monitoring of the baby uh, they used to uh, do suction uh, from the mouth and the nose but now uh, the latest guidelines say no if he is vigorous don't do anything just warm in the baby and do the other steps of resuscitation okay if he is not vigorous he has no strong respiratory efforts he is sleepy uh, muscle tone is bad heart rate is below 100 okay then you have to do suction from the trachea suction from the mouth and the trachea by introducing the endotracheal tube again this graph show you that the presence of meconium okay uh, and amniot in, uh, amniotic fluid okay you have to use minimal stimulation and keep head down to prevent breathing in meconium so this is a maneuver to prevent breathing of meconium is to keep the head down and use minimal stimulation okay if then you hand the infant to a neonatal evaluation team and again see please is the infant vigorous he is uh, respiratory uh, strong respiratory effort good muscle tone and uh, heart rate is above 100 yes so expectant management nothing to do no he is not vigorous he is not crying heart rate is below 100 no good muscle tone okay you have to intubate the patient and to do suction to do suction this is the treatment of meconium aspiration now the complications of the meconium aspiration the most important uh, actually it's important cause of mortality in neonates the meconium aspiration okay but the most important complication of meconium aspiration is what we call persistent newborn pulmonary hypertension okay i'm sorry persistent newborn pulmonary hypertension what is persistent newborn pulmonary hypertension is failure of normal circulation transmission after birth so the baby has got his own circulation before birth and after birth this circulation must trans, uh, transfuse into other uh, circulation okay if the uh, trans, uh, transition into new circulation or normal circulation after birth fa has failed then we have persistent newborn pulmonary hypertension okay 
uh, what you have to do in this uh, to prevent persistent pulmonary newborn hypertension is to avoid vasoconstriction by avoiding acidosis, hypoxia, and metabolic disturbances like hypocalcemia, hypercalcemia, hyperglycemia, hypoglycemia. You remember I talked about this in respiratory distress syndrome, okay? So good hydration and so on. And you have to prevent right to left chant. So please but just remember that the motor complication of meconium aspiration is persistent newborn pulmonary hypertension. This is all about meconium aspiration. I talked about the definition of meconium aspiration, the pathogenesis of this condition and the symptoms and the diagnosis of meconium aspiration, the chest x-ray, the blood gas and stethoscope crackles, okay, and treatment of meconium aspiration, how to prevent uh, what about the steroids, surfactant, antibiotics, no proven benefit until now, and the amnio infusion, also no proven benefit. And then I talked about the complication of the meconium aspiration. Now I'm letting you with this beautiful video about Abgar score. For the, For the Abgar, Abgar, the newborn is given a score from 0 to 2 in each of 5 categories. categories. Heart rate, respiratory effort, effort muscle tone, tone reflex irritability, and skin color. The assessment is completed at one minute and repeated at five minutes following birth. The nurse auscultates the apical pulse to determine heart rate. If the rate is above 100 per minute, the infant receives a score of two. If less than 100, a score of one, and zero if there is no heart rate. Respiratory effort is assessed by observing and auscultating the chest. A score of 2 is given if the infant is crying vigorously or if the respirations are spontaneous and regular, 1 if the effort is weak or irregular, and 0 if there is no effort. The muscle tone of a full-term infant is judged by the amount of flexion. Well-flexed extremities receive a score of 2, some flexion a score of 1, and if the infant is flaccid, the score is 0. The nurse evaluates reflex irritability by gently slapping the sole of the infant's foot or by inserting a catheter in the newborn's nose. A responding cry receives a score of 2. A grimace receives a score of 1. And no response is scored 0. Color is the fifth component and the infant must be assessed for both central and peripheral cyanosis. If the Caucasian infant is completely pink, indicating oxygenated blood, the score is 2. The score is reduced to 1 if the hands and feet are bluish. If the infant is pale or if the body or face is blue, the score is 0. Because non-Caucasian infants may appear ashen gray, the mucous membranes of the lips, mouth, and tongue should be observed for central cyanosis. The scores for all five components are then totaled. A score of 8, 9, or 10 indicates satisfactory cardiopulmonary adaptation and requires no specific intervention. Scores between 5 and 7 indicate the need for stimulation and the administration of oxygen via bag and face mask. Resuscitation may be required if the score is below 4. So thank you very much for watching this video. In this in the second in, in the subsequent video, I'm going to talk about transtachypnea in newborn and uh, briefly about congenital pneumonia. Okay, and I'm going to end up the respiratory distress in newborn. Thank you very much. See you in the next video.